All right, thanks everybody. My name is Benjamin Allen. I am a uh, technical specialist out here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory and an affiliate at Berkeley Lab. Um, so I am the user and uh, engagement and outreach coordinator for the K-Base project. Um, and today we're going to be talking about some special tools that are in KBase related to viral genomics and identifying and classifying viral sequences within uh, your data. So we're going to go through an example of this, and I'll share with you um, a new tutorial that we have put together based off of some previous material. Um, using these tools in our platform, but uh, you can follow along yeah, the tutorial in this link here that's in this questions and answers document. So this will take you uh, to the tutorial where you can click around and explore the reports and uh, apps and different kinds of data that are uh, related to this analysis. So uh, I'll be walking through this on my screen, but you can uh, go to that link and uh, that will allow you to interact with the narrative as well. Um, so um, in addition to uh, that uh, link, which is uh, going to be mostly what we're covering today, I've dropped some links to um, publications that are related to these tools. Uh, if you want to read more about the design and um, the databases and uh, algorithms underlying all of these different tools. So um, you'll be able to access those. They're also linked inside of this tutorial as well. Uh, so one thing I just want to um, make note of is that all of these tools today uh, that, that we're showing are uh, supported in part from a science focus area grant from the Department of Energy Office of Science, Biological and Environmental Research um, to help support different, um, different development within KBase and linkages between KBase and other uh, scientific projects. So um, and specifically, a lot of these tools were developed uh, by Matt Sullivan and the iVirus group, uh, as well as Ben Bulldock. Um, and so they've uh, put together a lot of these tools like v, uh, v Contact, um, Veer Matcher, Veer Sorter that we're going to uh, cover today. Um, so the, the iVirus toolkit, uh, you can go to their website and see they've got a couple of different uh, deployments uh, beyond KBase as well as their own um, uh, ways you can access their tools. So they're a, a really great group because they are trying to make sure that their tools are accessible to the broader research community. And uh, we really encourage people to do that. As you all know, um, you know, bioinformatics is a field that moves very quickly. And so it's hard to kind of um, maintain access and, and persistence to a lot of these tools. And so uh, the iVirus group does a great job of making sure that all of you and the broader research community maintain access to all of their tools. So um, thanks to the iVirus group, thanks to uh, Ben and Matt um, and all, all of their team for putting their tools in KBase and helping build some of the, um, the examples that I'll be showing you today. Um, in addition to that, um, to, to their group, we'll also want to shout out uh, Kayla Borton and Kelly Wrighton and the GROW initiative. They uh, have also put in uh, one of the tools that we're going to talk about today, which is DRAM V. Um, that's an annotation tool that their uh, group has built um, that is compatible with all sorts of um, uh, types of data, but uh, in, in addition to uh, you know bacterial and uh, archaeal data, it also works on uh, for annotating viruses. So. I'll show you all how to use that. Um, just other things to note, as I said, we will post this webinar on our YouTube channel. You can uh, follow us on, on YouTube. Uh, we post uh, links to webinars as well as uh, other training events there. So if you want to view our uh, back catalog of webinars or other tutorials, those are on our YouTube 
um, for you to, to visit. Um, so uh, give us a subscribe on YouTube um, and, and you can stay in touch with us and you know share these uh, webinars with your postdocs or students or other colleagues. Um, finally, we are on social media as well, LinkedIn and X, uh, aka Twitter. So if you still uh, use those kind of social media platforms, go ahead and uh, follow us there as well. Um, if you're interested in helping us um, test and develop tools in the future, feel free to uh, sign up to our beta testers pool. Um, so we've been releasing some new features and on the platform lately, and of course need you all to test them um, with your own data and, and your own uh, kind of perspectives. So uh, you know, please sign up for that if you're interested in helping us develop the platform in a way that is uh, continuing to serve your needs. So. All right, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into our narrative. Again, you can follow along uh, at this link at the top of the questions and answers document. Um, but you can also now find this um, in the uh, KBase Navigator in the tutorial section. Uh, you can find this viral genomics tutorial uh, linked at the top. So just in, in case you're looking for it later on. Um, so, uh, this narrative is, is built off of a similar one that, uh, we put together about four years ago. Um, and so a lot has changed, uh, since 2020, of course, but, uh, so the example that we're using is, is the same as this, uh, initial viral analysis pipeline. So, um, if you attended that, uh, back then, uh, this will be similar. Oh, okay. I will, um. Uh, let me make this a little larger for people to see. Hopefully that's um, that's a little bit better. Uh, thanks for that uh, in the chat. So um, this example basically is taking a um, taking a metagenomic data set from the Global Ocean Virome project. Uh, so you can kind of see in this graphic their uh, their sampling and some of their uh, findings of um, you know, different uh, families and, and, and uh, unclassified viruses that, so, you know, the kind of point of this is to say that, um, you know, gathering viral data in, in huge quantities in, uh, is, a, is a very recent endeavor. And on the bioinformatics side, people are still in the process of developing tools to uh, classify um, th these viruses uh, all over the world. So, you know, it's an interesting example because the uh, the way these tools are developing, you know, you can think of bioinformatics tools as a way of organizing, you know, theoretical approaches to understanding taxonomy and classification. And um, so I think this is a really interesting example because it's uh, really kind of where the theory is meeting the practice uh, for bioinformatics. Um, and and so these kind of big data projects like uh, Global Ocean Virome help um, help uh, feed our our ability to develop new theories as as we deal with uh, larger data sets. So um, so this this is data that's available in the NCBI sequencing read archive. Um, so just so you get an understanding of how we pulled this data into KBase, um, you, uh, so we have this tool here called import SRA file as reads from web. Uh, you can access this in the uh, apps panel. If I type in SRA there, you will find the uh, this importer tool. And this is just a very nice tool. I think it's uh, useful um, independently of this analysis, just because it allows you to directly pull data from SRA into the narrative. So um, if you follow that the link to this record on SRA, it will take you to uh, this page. And if you're looking for the link to drop in the, uh, the URL to drop into this tool, um, on any SRA record, if you go over to this um, data access section uh, section at the top, you can uh, find the link to uh, this uh, you know, 
this Amazon Web Services uh, FTP where this data is hosted. So that's the URL um, that you drop in this uh, in this section of the app to, to import that data. And I only say this because between the last example and this current example, uh, that has changed. Uh, you know, uh, all of these things, like I said, are changing all of the time. So we always have to kind of go and, and update things and make sure that um, we're able to link out to these uh, external resources and, and pull in data. So um, you can very quickly and easily import SRA uh, reads into KBase using this app. So um, you know, whether you're doing viral genomics or other metagenomic activities, this is a very nice way to pull um, data from other projects in. So we start by pulling in this um, metagenomic sequencing data from global ocean virons. Um, and it, um, it, it will, you know, give you a little report after it's successfully, um, uh, done the import job. And, and if, if you have any issues or you, you have any trouble importing, uh, feel free to reach out to us on our, uh, KBase help board. So, um, I'll show there's links to that in the resources document. Um, you can also access it at uh, the top of the narrative with this help um, help button. But uh, so after this is imported, we want to do some of the standard metagenomic uh, sequencing processes to uh, do quality control and assembly. So this is pretty straightforward and uh, not necessarily why you all are here today, but um, you know, the, the in this example, they use FASTQC to do a little bit of um, quality control or quality assessment, and then uh, trimomatic to trim down some of these, uh, some of the the lower quality uh, sequences, and to do any uh, residual adapter removal. Uh, honestly, in this example, these are pretty good uh, reads, so they don't really require extensive um, quality control, but just so you know, those tools are available uh, in KBase. Uh, so after uh, doing QAQC on the reads, we plug them into Metaspades um, and generate an assembly uh, from uh, these metagenome sequencing reads. So a nice thing about uh, just the kind of uh, connect this to uh, you know other possible pathways for analysis in KBase. One of the nice things is that uh, you know the, these assemblies that you create can be used for other downstream analysis. So if I want to uh, do any binning or uh, you know mag extraction from metagenome uh, sequencing data, uh, I can. Um, you know, I could assemble these reads and create a copy of my narrative and run different um, different kinds of analytical pathways. So um, just as a kind of highlight, of, you know, one of the reasons that we encourage people to use KBase is that you have a lot of uh, modularity and persistence with your data. So uh, as we develop new tools or integrate new tools, um, you know, the, the outputs of these, uh, you know, processes uh, can be used in different uh, pathways and, and remain persistent for any updates um, in the future. So, uh, again, this is a pretty straightforward process, reads QA, QC, and then assembly. Um, and this is, once we have an assembled um, metagenome, we can start to do some analysis of the viral content. So this is really why you all are here today, presumably. So we're going to start with um, using a tool called Kaiju, which actually does not require an assembly. You can just use raw reads for this. Um, but I have included it in, in this example because uh, we recently updated Kaiju to have a variety of databases, including two that are viral specific. So uh, you can take your, your reads um, you know, directly from SRA or, or your own libraries uh, and, and plug them into Kaiju. And uh, you'll see that there's some different um, 
databases that you can look. So if you're looking for prokaryotes or eukaryotes or fungi, uh, you know, archaea, et cetera, you can select different reference databases and even specify the taxonomic level that you want to filter to. Uh, but in this, these two examples, uh, we're selecting this one labeled viruses, which is all of the uh, viral sequences in, in NCBI RefSeq. And then there's also this reference viral database, which is a uh, independent project uh, for uh, uh, collecting and um, categorizing and assigning taxonomy to uh, uh, viral sequences. So uh, if you've used Kaiju before, this uh, report will appear familiar to you. But uh, if I go to the results tab, I get, um, and I'm just going to open this in a separate window so that I can get a little bit better view. Um, but this is nice because you can um, get a sense of abundance uh, you know, based off of um, the percentage of, of classified reads of all of these different uh, viruses that uh, may be present in this sample. Um, and in addition to that view, you can get this uh, chrono plot uh, that will uh, give you a, a nice kind of uh, interactive way to um, to see exactly, or you know, to give to give you an estimate of um, the abundance and presence of uh, different viruses in this sample. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that you know, as I said, you know, these databases are always changing as more people are pulling more data out of the environment and adding. Um, you know, doing additional classification and publishing that, and you know these uh, you know, international consortia that work on taxonomy. So I just want to highlight that uh, you know, you'll see some very different you know between using the two databases here. So this is the um, the NCBI RefSeq one, and this is the uh, reference virus database. So um, you know you have to kind of understand a little bit what um how these different databases are organized so uh, just encouraging you as you're using these tools to um look closely at the uh, underlying uh, databases so that you know when you're you see kind of big differences in terms of uh you know what what is being displayed in the outputs you can uh, understand that a little bit so um anyway so this is just to say uh, you can use this tool to give you a sense of um what viral sequences are in your data um you know free of assembly um but as we we go on later in this example you'll see some more um i should say uh, accurate ways to uh characterize the viral sequences inside of your metagenomic samples. But I think this is cool because, you know, part of what we encourage people to do with KBase is to do these kind of comparisons so that you can see, um, you know, where the, how the different databases are and tools are evolving over time. Um, so that's Kaiju. Um, so the next tool here is one, again, that Ben Bulldock and Matt Sullivan's group um, and Simon Rue at JGI have uh, developed called uh, Veersorter 2. Um, so this is a, a way to do uh, identify viral sequences in your assembly. And it also allows you to select different viral groups uh, that you want to identify. Um, the original Veersorter uh, was limited to uh, double-stranded DNA phages, um, but you can see they've added um, additional viral um, taxonomy and, and typology so that you can um, uh, identify more uh, kinds of viruses in your data. So um, this, this tool requires a assembly, so you have to uh, run Metaspades um, or another assembler to uh, plug your data in here, but um, just a couple of things to note. Um, so, you know, by 
these are the default parameters and they generally work pretty well. Um, you can select the type of uh, viral group you want to include here. So you can only select one at a time. If you want to run additional um, groups, you'll have to create multiple copies of the app um, and, and select this parameter. Um, but you can select additional parameters as well. Uh, the only one that we've selected here that is worth noting is uh, enable DRAM V output. So uh, we'll show DRAM in a little bit, but it's an annotation tool if you're trying to uh, annotate AMGs uh, on your um, viral sequences, you'll need to, to select this. So, um, you know, uh, this will be relevant later on, but just note that because we get a, a quite a few uh, support tickets where people are trying to um, run Dram V, but they have not selected this on the uh, Your Sorter 2 app. Um, so uh, just to give you a sense of what the output of this looks like, um, so this is uh, going to give you a nice report that you can use to, um, and it's hard to kind of see all of this in the window. So again, I'll, I'll break it out into a uh, separate window here, but this is giving you a, um, a lot of ways to, to look at the uh, viral signatures that have been identified on the contigs in your assembly. Uh, so I can do some different things here, like just filtering by, um, Oh, whoops. Uh, so let me just type in one here, actually. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so um, if I if I'm looking for, you know, direct hits for where there's DS, uh, double stranded DNA phages on any of my uh, contigs, I can use these scoring um, uh, sections of the report to sort and look through um, all of the different um, uh, contigs on the assembly and identify which contigs might have um, these pages attached to them. So, uh, you know, obviously in this in this example, one is sort of a, a, a direct hit, but you can, of course, uh, do some sorting to um, find additional hits. Um, so there's a large number of entries here. So, um, you can use additional uh, ways to sort here if I use like max score, or actually I'll use DS DNA page. And so you, this is actually a little easier because you can get a, uh, in addition to the score, you can get a, a count for how many have actually um, hit that score. So it's a little, um, an easier way to sift through all of this data. Uh, in addition, you can um, use these other scoring um, uh, scores to, to filter down your data. And so this is just really meant to give you a sense of, uh, again, which contigs on your assembly have um, signatures related to these different viral groups. And in this, in this instance, it's double-stranded DNA pages, but I was looking for RNA viruses or other uh, signature sequences, this will tell you uh, which contig has uh, sequences that match those signatures. So it's a nice way to, it, it, this isn't telling me anything about what viruses they are or, or in assigning any taxonomy. Uh, it's just giving me a kind of location within my metagenome. So, um, so yeah, you can use these different uh, filters uh, to select um, or identify different um, uh, uh, contigs on your assembly. Um, you can there's some export uh, here if you want to uh, you know print these as an Excel or CSV file to um, explore them on your own outside of your web browser because sometimes uh, you know these report viewers are kind of challenging to um, you know, maintain, you know, or annotate your own records. Um, so you can do some exporting as well. Um, so 
uh, yeah, Veer, Veer sort of too very useful for identifying um, viral sequences. If you want to see more about how uh, Veer sorter works, uh, you can go to the info section of the app. Um, you can click full documentation here, and this will bring you to a Kbase app page that allows you to see with greater specificity what all of these parameters are and how you might set them to your um, to your advantage. Uh, one thing I should say uh, I, I, in setting the parameters for this is that for viral sequences, you're going to want to set a minimum sequence length of uh, 5,000 base pairs or uh, higher just because, um, you know, when viruses are, of course, the smallest, um, you know, have the smallest size, um, a, a smallest amount of genetic material. And so uh, you have to set a little bit higher threshold um, than you would with, you know, doing something like assembly, uh, because if, if you set this too low, it will misidentify sequences. Um, just because of the kind of uh, flavor of uh, Kamer configurations that are used to identify these different viral uh, signature sequences. So that's just to say you can either, uh, like the original example filtered its, um, did, did filtering on the assembly itself. Uh, they have added this parameter in Veer Sorter 2 that just allows you to filter at, um, uh, during the processing. So uh, so that's nice because, you know, changing the filter on the assembly itself may then affect your ability to um, uh, do binning for uh, for mags or assemble mags within your um, metagenomic sequencing. So um, I think this is set by 5,000 by, by default, um, but just a point of note about... Um, yeah, adding filters to your assembly data before you uh, run them through beer sorter. Uh, so again, now we've got a way we can look at our um, at viral signature sequences within our uh, our data here. Um, so just. And a next step here is to look at uh, annotating some of the functional genes on these uh, viruses with DRAMV. So DRAMV right now is the only viral annotation tool that we have on Kbase, um, but it's it's very nice um, because DRAMV, of course, is also or sorry, DRAM I should say is also compatible with um, bacteria and archaea, so you can use it for annotating a uh, wide array of uh, functional genes on uh, on different um, uh, organisms and genetic sequences. <laughs> uh, um, so in, in particular with uh, viruses, uh, you know, what we're looking for is uh, auxiliary metabolic genes. So, uh, you know, these are um, genes that, you know, when the, the bacteriophage has infected a host, it may change the, the metabolic capacity of an organism. Um, so, you know, you can in, un, imagine looking at metagenomic data, uh, why it's powerful to look at both the bacterial and archaeal genomes and understand their function, functional capacity, and then looking at viral um, functional um, genes and seeing how that might modify the way that, um, you know, a community is uh, processing different metabolites or, you know, engaged in uh, biogeophysical and biogeochemical processes like, uh, you know, carbon or nitrogen cycling. So you can think of, um, you know, viruses as kind of uh, modifying the greater metabolic capacity of, you know, bacteria in an environment. So um, this is just, you know, an example a diagram from the DRAM paper of, uh, you know, how it's calling genes and how it's referencing these different uh, databases to uh, give you this uh, distilled and refined annotation, um, as they call it. So, um, so 
when you are plugging your inputs into DRAMV on KBase, uh, you know, why we had to check that box in the previous app is specifically to get this uh, shock ID parameter. And so, again, this will not work unless you pull this uh, kind of KBase specific identifier. So I'll, I'll jump back to um, Veer Sorter in a second and show you where to find that. Um, but uh, again, you just take the assembly that you generated, um, you add the shock ID for um, these uh, ID identified sequences from Veer Sorter. Uh, you can set additional parameters if you want. Um, but uh, again, yeah, DRAMV is set up to, to run on just about everything with the default parameters. So just jumping back to Veer Sorter here, I'm going to the summary tab. It's hidden by, uh, by default in the result. Uh, you'll just see this, uh, this link here and it says, uh, or this, this string here, and it says for users that have enabled JMV compatibility, the shock ID is uh, this long string. So you have to copy this and put it into DRAMV um, to, to make it run so that uh, this can kind of talk between these two apps on the back end. Um, but uh, the results tab here again shows you a, um, a, a big list of all of those um, uh, contigs that had hits in Veer Sorter and uh, you know presence or absence of um, these genes in these uh, contigs and these viral uh, signature sequences. I'll just again show the report in a second window so that you can get a, uh, a another kind of view on it. So again, these are all genes that are involved in the modification of these uh, larger metabolic processes, uh, whether it's you know core metabolism or uh, you know. Uh, uh, denitrification and um, carbon utilization and so on. This is a, a little tricky because I think it's it may be reversed from the uh, other uh, DRAM tools in that uh, green is false and, and uh, blank or clear is true. So I think that is a reverse, just FYI. Uh, so just be careful when you're looking at this because it's actually these, uh, you know, uh, empty-ish um, ones that are uh, indicating where the hits are. And so you can see as I hover over each of these hits, it's now showing me uh, which gene is present, which pathway uh, it's functionally related to, uh, and which contig it's on. So this is just useful because, you know, um, you know, they're not assigning taxonomy directly to these uh, contigs. So you have to kind of keep note of the contig name, you know, where it says node 340 here, uh, for example, because uh, as I'm going to show you later, as you, um, you know, now that we've identified our viral, um, viral signature uh, sequences, you can, uh, those that, when you're trying to understand some taxonomy later on, uh, that'll be Im important, uh, especially using um, the, the contact. So um, anyway, here they're, of course, just listed as uh, this long list of viral um, viral sequences identified by uh, Veer Sorter. But uh, again, you can hover over this interactive map to get a sense of presence and absence. You've got the um, auxiliary metabolism uh, gene count here. So it's sorted by count, um, you know, partially by count here, I should say. Um, and uh, you can look at it across these different categories to explore these things. Um, I should say as well, uh, so you'll notice that um, a lot of these tools do not create K-base objects. Uh, we don't yet have a K-base data type specification for uh, viral signature sequences or viral sequences more generally. So these are all uh, just creating reports, uh, but they're also creating 
files that you can download for your own exploration, you know, off of KBase. So with any of these apps, you're going to want to, uh, you know, if you want to do any analysis offline, be sure to check the files section underneath um, because you can download, uh, you know, for instance, you can download all of these annotations um, or even uh, you know, these annotated uh, sequences as GenBank files um, from the bottom here and also get access to all of these statistics. So, um, yeah, there's nothing exciting in the summary there. But uh, so, yeah, that's just something to make note of. Don't expect a lot of these tools to produce anything in the data panel um, because they're mostly just re generating reports or files that you can download. So uh, moving on from uh, Dram V, uh, let's take a look at V contact. So this is, uh, you know, we we did a little bit of taxonomic classification with uh, Kaiju, but you know that's Kaiju again is meant to give you kind of a broad overview of um, potential taxonomy uh, within your um, your sample. So uh, V contact is uh, allows you to get more granular with your um, viral taxonom taxonomic assignments. Um, so uh, basically, this is uh, you using a, a you know a database and Kamer based approach to uh, assign taxonomy. Uh, to your viral signature sequences. It does this uh, independently of, uh, or sorry, I should say, it, it, it does this uh, dependent on your uh, VIR sorter output. So you will want to uh, make sure you run your uh, assembly through VIR sorter before you uh, plug it into vContact here. Um, but again, um, so, you take your assembly from uh, uh, VIR sorter and then you um, pick which database you want to use. So um, you can see that uh, there's a combination of uh, database uh, taxonomies from um, ICTV, which is the, I think it's International Consortium on the Taxonomy of Viruses, as well as in CBI. Um, and you can select whether you're looking for prokaryotic or archaeal viruses. So um, you may have to run this multiple times, but there's several versions of their databases here. Um, in this instance, we're running version 201 because it's the most recent one uh, on KBase. I think we've had some issues with some of these other databases. So um, just you know, FYI, if, if you're running and, and one of the databases doesn't work, you might try another one, but we've had pretty good success with uh, 201. So that's what we've selected here. Um, these are just different uh, clustering methods that uh, you can select for um, basically clustering those uh, signature sequences identified in your assembly with uh, signature sequences from these databases. So as you'll see, when we look at the vContact output here, it builds a very large table of all of the um, uh, taxonomic clusters that are from these databases, but integrates the um, those from your own data into that. So there's a, a good explanation at the bottom of how to look at the results, but just to say uh, different clustering methods here may produce different uh, taxonomic assignments. So uh, this is all uh, the differences between these clustering algorithms are covered in the um, in the V contact paper. If you want to dive into those details on your own, but um, these are the default ones um, uh, for 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 this tool. And, and there's a lot of um, additional parameters that you can set. You know. I would encourage you to try running the defaults first and then um, you know, making modifications and in, in sort of seeing if it makes any difference. Um, so let's go over to the results tab and take a look here. 
Um, so you'll definitely want to view this report in a separate window. But before I kind of go into uh, the details of this report, I just want to highlight that, um, you know, because this can be a little tricky to navigate, there's a, a good primer on how to do this here and specifically identifying um, things that have been successfully uh, clustered and, and assigned within your um, your assembly. So I'll, I'll show you how to uh, do this in the report here. Um, oops, apologies. Um, so let me go to the report, open it in another window. So as I said, um, this is going to produce a very large database table. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and set this to 25. And yeah, there we go. Now it's all on the screen. So, uh, you know, what you're seeing initially here are um, taxonomy that's included in the database. So these are not, um, uh, this is not referring to genomes in our sample. Uh, this is just all of the genomes in the database. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is type in node. And this gives me now a, this is because node is just something assigned to the uh, contigs, uh, all of the different uh, contig identifiers within um, uh, 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 spades. It's it's how it's, it's just sort of uh, a string that indicates that these are uh, contigs in my spades assembly and not the um, not the reference genomes in here. So if I type in node and then I type in clustered here, um, this is just giving me uh, you know things that I have in my own uh, sample that have been clustered with other hits within these reference uh, databases. Um, and I think just to pull from the example, oops, um, which which was it here? Sorry, can't remember exact number <laughs> that it was uh, telling me to search for. Um, right. And if I go back and I sort by VC, let's find that one three three two. This may have changed actually between now and the previous example. Yeah, it does appear that it has changed. Um, okay, so yeah, the, so some of these uh, these VC assignments have changed between <laughs> the previous example and this current one. So, um, but. Uh, what I can pick here is anything that has um, um, multiple cluster assignments here. So I think I can do this here, right. And then if I delete node, let's see what happens. Okay, so it didn't do anything on that one. I'll see if I can find an example here. But what I'm trying to do here is, is identify um, the clustered uh, the the sequences that have clustered with another uh, hit so in the database and um, let's see if I can find use some of these other ones that he had annotated here let's see if any of these work um, no um, let's see. Oh, sorry about this. I, I should have checked before uh, running this today. But uh, let's see if I can find another example here quickly. Um, so what I should be able to do is is delete. Um, so there may be another way to do this here, actually. Um, anyway, what I'm trying to do here is 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 basically find um, hits on my uh, assembly that um, are clustered, and then this VC matches 
the uh, this VC number matches the VC numbers in my in the genomes in the reference database. So, um, yeah, we'll need to change the uh, the hits here because something has has changed in how these uh, VC assignments are are going. But um, so in theory, if you follow this process here, you will be able to um, search through your signature sequences, uh, search through the, 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 the hits on uh, your own genome, match the VC numbers. And then if you delete where it says node here, you can um, find uh, actual taxonomic assignments. Um, Again, this is probably a lot easier to do outside of KBase. So there's ways that you can uh, print your CSV or Excel and do this exploration on your your own. Just because, as you can see here, it's uh, um, it's a little more challenging just to do it uh, in this uh, this interface here. But uh, let me search around just a little bit longer and see if I can find any hits. So you know, it's for just so you can. Get a sense here what it's telling you. It's it's clustering um, these three hits um, from three different um, contexts. So these are likely the same virus, but uh, let's just see if this yields anything as I delete node. Yeah. So if it if it was if it had a, a genus assigned to it, it would. Um, you know, give me some hits from the database, but uh, I won't keep fighting it for too much longer here. Because yeah, you can see. So these are the the hits from the database um, that uh, you know they have these numbers. So you can also, you know, in theory, you can kind of go through um, and typing in, you know, these different numbers. Oh, there you go. Ha, that one worked. So uh, if you know, I type in. Um, well, it's kind of working. It's pulling up additional uh, hits as well. So anyway, you can explore this on your own, but you know, I, ideally, what you're looking for is uh, matches between the VC uh, numbers on your nodes. And um, well, let's see. Someone says seven seven four should give me a hit. Ah, thank you, Dylan, in the chat. Uh, <laughs> what a lifesaver. Uh, so yeah, the great example. So this is showing you uh, the the node on on my sequences, and then the reference hit in this uh, this uh, library here. So uh, this means that you know this Rhodobacter phage uh, is likely present in this, um, or it's been identified in this assembly uh, from my metagenome. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dylan, for that. Uh, so, um, you know, that's kind of a tricky way to do this, but, um, you know, again, it's it's probably a lot easier to just take this into Excel and do this kind of searching and, and filtering for whatever you're looking for. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll give these a good update. So with, with, with all of the hits here um, later on. So, uh, again, there's... So there's other, uh, you know, reference material for vContact um, in this uh, example narrative um, where you can look at ways to, uh, you know, understand what the status and all of these different sections of the report are, you know, what the difference between clustered or singleton means, or if there's any, um, you know, overlap. Um, so that's uh, making it hard to do classification. Um, so yeah, I, I, this is a, it, it takes a little bit of finessing to, to find the hits here. Um, and you may wanna pull this data off of KBase to do that, but um, you at least kind of get a sense of how to explore that report and identify hits. Um, I think this is the last part here. Yeah, so uh, last part here is Veer Matcher. So Veer Matcher is useful, um, especially for doing, uh, if you're trying to understand a little bit of like virus and host ecology, um, this will sh identify uh, viral sequences, again, that have been uh, tagged by Veer Sorter. 
and connect them with uh, larger uh, sequences on in your uh, metagenome assembly. So if you're trying, so in this example, we're we're just using the uh, we're plugging in the um, you know viral uh, signature sequences as well as the um, the whole uh, metagenome assembly. But as you can see here, if you have something like um, you know, just isolate genomes or or bend genomes from your metagenome uh, sample. You can plug these uh, into Veermatcher as well to identify um, where different phages or viruses might be um, as associated with microbial hosts in your sample. So again, it allows you to get more granular about what um how uh, viral and and uh, where which viral and host uh, signature sequences are related uh and it gives you these uh a scoring system again where you can kind of sort uh to identify um the uh viral populations and their bacterial hosts here so this again is not super uh useful in this view just because we have these uh, you know contig node labels here um, but if you have are plugging in annotated um, microbial sequences it will you know it will allow you to identify which uh, viral hits are associated with your uh, your bacteria and you can use of course by going through that uh, table and v contact uh, v contact, um you can you know figure out which uh which uh, viruses these are and if they have any taxonomy assigned to them or they are unclassified viral sequences um so uh yeah uh, again this is just a kind of broad overview of the viral tools that we have in KBase. Um, so we, you know, to using our uh, metagenomic sequencing reads, um, we assembled those, we uh, identified uh, double-stranded DNA viruses in that uh, metagenome sample. We did some annotation of AMG, uh, uh, auxiliary metabolic genes and 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 viral populations associated with that um, uh, with that uh, metagenome sample. We looked into the taxonomy and and which classified and unclassified uh, viral signature sequences were found in that uh, using V contact two, and then we looked at uh, bacterial and host. Um, relationships using Veer Matcher. So you can see you can do quite a lot um, with uh, you know your your metagenome uh, samples uh, and sequences and, and for identifying viruses with just these tools. Um, maybe you all have additional tools that you use in your work that you would like us to uh, integrate or um, you know, you have additional thoughts about how we should develop this pipeline. I definitely encourage you to to reach out to us and let us know if you have uh, thoughts about that. Uh, you can also, um, at the bottom of this narrative tutorial, as you're going through it yourself, um, you can uh, open up this Google form at the end and leave us uh, any feedback for anything that you would uh, like us to change. So. Uh, feel free to leave us feedback or reach out to us on the help board if you're having any trouble using these um, um, these tools. So uh, let me just do a quick check on the questions and answers documents. I don't see anything. So um, yeah, and we're at the top of the hour. So I will go ahead and conclude then. So thank you all for attending our webinar today. Again, if you want to access this tutorial, um, you can find it at the top of the tutorial section. Um, I'll swap out those uh, those VC numbers for um, V contacts so you can get some uh, more success. But uh, yeah, thank you all and uh, hope to see you using KBase. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if you need any help or support or thinking through your 
um, thinking through your, your data um, or, or your analysis pipelines. We're, we're happy to help uh, where we can. Thanks for watching this webinar. For more webinars and tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can see announcements for upcoming webinars and recordings for previous webinars on our website at kbase.us learn. Let us know in the comments what content you'd like to see in future webinars. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at DOE KBase. And if you have questions or encounter an error when using KBase, please contact the help desk.